continuing in the sampling distribution for the sample mean. So now we have <clears throat> this uh, setup highlights. Suppose we have a population S and it has a uh, mean of the population, has a mean of, of mu and standard devi deviation sigma. So that's, that's known. <clears throat> then the, uh, when you sample from that, as we were discussing that concept, then the standard deviation is sigma over root n, which we stated. <clears throat> that is called the standard error. So the standard, standard error of the sample population is sigma over root n of the square root of the sample size. So the standard error approaches zero as n approaches infinity. So if you keep sampling forever, there isn't an error. It's exactly what this, the population is. That's the idea. <clears throat> okay, then we have two cases. Case one, if the, sam if the population is normal. And case two, if the population is not normal or non-normal, as, like, as they say. So that's, and that's a capital S it's for um, <clears throat> like universe or population. Sometimes they use a, uh, a like a cursive S. All right, so <clears throat> let's continue. Well, this is sample distribution for X bar or the sample mean, and then we will do the same thing for uh, proportion. That'll be next. Okay, so a couple things. When you calculate a z-score for this, for, the, for x bar, we'll talk about sample size as well, then it, what you do is you calculate z is the estimator. So it is the estimator minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. All right, so when you do that calculation, <clears throat> we end up doing, uh, so for that, that's, that's z-score. So what we'll do is we'll do this, we'll say this is approximately <clears throat> and what you'll do is you'll take uh, x bar, okay, you'll do x bar minus mu. See, this is the weird thing. We, we, we know mu. Well, if we know mu, why are we sampling? Anyway, it's, it's statistics. What can I say? <clears throat> okay, it's, it's, it's getting you started. It's like doing physics when you assume a uh, frictionless surface. First you talk about that and then you move on to assumptions you can make from that. You add friction and things like that. So that's what we're doing. It's just, you know, as I mentioned, a little different for me. So then it's divided by sigma over the square root of n. So that's how we'll do the calculation. Now let's talk about sample size a little bit. This is again a little, little rough of how they do things in statistics. Uh, there's, they talk about three cases <clears throat> and uh, I'll just describe what, what you do. So here's the idea. If you have a population that you know is normal or you, you have a really good um, indication that the population is normal, then you don't need a large sample size because your, your, that distribution will be normal. The next bar will be approximately mu. Uh, if you're, uh, if it's a skewed population or, or polar, then you need to sample many times to get that sampling distribution to be normal. Okay, think about what I just said. Rewind it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and that normally, so for, I'll just say this too, and I mentioned this, the number earlier, the, the magic number is 30. So I'll just say for a non-normal population, n is greater than or equal to 30. So you need to do 30 samples of it. 
<clears throat> and that number can be proven and all that. And this, and again, this is based off of a random sample. If the sample can't be random, truly random, then these theorems don't hold. <clears throat> um, we're assuming that it is random. So if the, nor if the population is normal, uh, then you can be smaller assuming this, the sample size, the, assuming how you're sampling is random. And that's where the rub comes in. What, what you do in practice is you try to get the biggest sample you can, frankly, because you don't know if it's really random or not. That's essentially how you do it. So you have an estimate what you need to get um, because you, all of these are based off of random samples. So you try to get a bigger sample to get it as close to this normal distribution as possible. All right, moving along. <clears throat> now, this is what I need you to do. Besides just the basic understanding, I need you to do this. This is right from the book. We're going to fill it out. Uh, and I saw that it, we don't have that, those answers. So this is actually a good exercise to do and easier for me to do the calculations. You can use, this will be in the book, like you can scan this <coughs> and then just fill it out or you can write everything out. So <coughs> this is, these are the details I need you to know um, specifically. Okay, so X bar from a normal or approximately normal population. We're going to find mu. We're going to calculate the standard error. We're going to, we're going to convert to z-score from that using that formula, and then we're going to use the tables. Now I'll use a different table, but it'll be the same same thing. So let's go let's go through and do this uh, together. <clears throat> so I think black's going to show it the best. Uh, let's maybe choose blue. Okay, so. <clears throat> Uh, you take a random sample of size 36, and the nice thing about 36 is what? <laughs> the square root is 6, <laughs> so it's kind of nice. From distribution with mean, so so that you know the distribution. You know that the mean is 75, and the standard deviation is 12. Okay, that gives you a lot of information, So, but they still want you to do this. The sampling distribution of X bar will be approximately what? Okay, the sampling distribution of X bar, well, if it's from a <laughs> random sample, the sampling distribution would approximately what? That, that should say normal right there, okay? So this is normal. With a mean of what? Well, the mean of a sampling distribution has to match, and, the, and it says back here, if you know the sampling distribution is normal or approximately normal, okay, then, then we know from that that X, then X bar has to equal mu. That's that's the assumption we're making. So this is mu with a mean of mu and standard deviation of now that we need to calculate. The standard deviation or standard error, so, and I'll say standard error, I, I, and then you'll know that you got to do the calculation. So that is sigma over root n. Sigma is 12 over the square root of 36. So that's 12 over 6, which is 2. <clears throat> okay, double check that, make sure it makes sense. To find the probability that the sample mean exceeds 80, oh no, to find the probability that the sample mean exceeds 80, write down the event of interest. Okay, it's asking you what is the probability that, that the, um, the sample mean exceeds 80. That's what it's asking you. Okay, so you're asking the probability that X bar is greater than, I don't care if you put equal to, remember, because it's you're assuming it's a continuous random variable, and you don't care about the equals for these cases, for this for a normal distribution, uh, and you say 80. So that is equal to, because of the tables, this is how you calculate it, you, that is one minus the probability that X bar is less than 80. Because remember, it's summed from bottom to top, from left to right. <clears throat> 
Okay, so then let's calculate the z score. So now you got to convert that to, that to z score so that we may use the tables. So if we convert that to z score, uh, x bar is 80. So this is 80 minus mu, which is 75. Let's use that same little line there, divided by 2. So that is uh, 5 halves. And decimals are fine in statistics, not in my algebra or calculus classes or above. <clears throat> so you get 2.5. <clears throat> okay, so that's your Z. Now think of it. Your z-score is 2.5. That's 2.5 standard deviation. So the probability is going to be really, really uh, lo low that it's above that, right? It, it, the, the mean is 75. Well, the standard deviation is only, the standard error is only 2. So that's it's, that's pretty high. <coughs> All right, so, you've, so it actually gives you that calculation that I just wrote above. So x bar greater than 80. So we're just rewriting it, I guess. Z is greater than 2.5. Okay, so that part's new, right? And that's one minus probability that Z is less than 2.5. Now we gotta look that up. And I'm doing this on the spot, by the way. I'm not, I haven't done this ahead of time. Okay, so now we gotta go to the Z scores. Here's the Z scores. I'm going to erase that so I don't have that. And it was 2.5. So we're going to write that number down. So we're going to 2.5, and it was exactly 2.5. So it's 0.9938. You see that? The highlight doesn't work very well, so I got to be careful. So it's this one. Oh, that one worked okay. Sometimes I don't know what it's going to do. Okay, so 0.9938 is what we're going to write down back here. <clears throat> So this is 1 minus 0.9938. And we do that calculation. So it'll, it'll be what, a point like zero, zero something? Okay, so 1, and you're going to subtract 0.9938. So that probability is 0 0.006. There's only a 6.2% chance. So that's equal to... 0 0.0062 or 6.2 percent chance so in other words a very small chance that when you do those selections <clears throat> your x bar is going to be greater than 80. okay but think about it your standard deviation is uh, sorry your mean is 75 right that's your that's your mean and so and you know, with a standard deviation or standard error of two well that only gets you up to 70 uh just a little higher right 78. so that probability that you select higher than 80 is should have been really small and it was okay <clears throat> uh define the probability the sample mean is between 70 and 72 write the event of interest okay so that's pretty much below i i think they just mean what they wrote below but basically it's a probability that you're between those numbers okay so that the sample mean is between 70 and 72 which is really this okay so that's what they mean so we need to do each of those calculations to find the z-score okay so go ahead and try those <clears throat> Although I don't have them written down, so we'll just do them together, I guess. All right, so x bar is 70 minus uh, 75 over 2. We've already done that. Or wait, yeah, same one, so that's just a 2. And then the other, <clears throat> let's just calculate that. So that'll be negative uh, 0.25, huh? Yeah, so that'll be 70 and then 75, and then divide by two. So that's negative 0.25. And then this one will be your 72 minus 75 over two. 
<clears throat> so 72, 75, subtract. And then divide by 2. That's negative 1.25. Sorry, negative 1.5. <clears throat> so this is the same as I wrote above. Your z-score is between negative 2.5 and negative 1.5. So now you got to do the one minus thing. So it's so it's or sorry, not the one minus thing. It's the probability that it's below negative one point five minus the probability that it's below negative two point five. This is because of the way they accumulate the tables. So you're doing the probability that z is less than negative one point five minus the probability that z is less than negative two point five. So we got to look up negative 1.5 in the tables. Go into the tables, and let's try to do another highlighter that seemed to work good. So negative uh, 1.5, negative, we'll wait down here, is this. <clears throat> so write down 0 0.0668. So we're going to go back and write down. 0 0.0668 and then we're going to subtract minus and then we got to look up the smaller one negative 2.5 which is uh, 0 0.0062 and I'll highlight it for you I'm looking here point negative 2.0062 so, 0 .0062. so in a, that's negative 2.0 Five zero, so that's why we're using that. So point zero zero six two. So we write down point point zero zero six two. Again, that's what we, we subtract. So point zero six six eight, and you're going to subtract point zero zero six two. And so that probability is point zero six zero six. <clears throat> okay, so that, another basically way to use the tables and how to convert from uh, the, using the sampling uh, distribution and converting to z-scores. So this is more or less like the type of calculations I'll want you to do for this section. Okay, we have one more thing to go next, which is the sample proportion, <clears throat> which is for the... Uh, binomial distributions and stuff.